Hello and welcome to Beller Family Fun. This video is all about the canoe trailer, how I did it, if I would do something different, and I just wanted to post this for the Bicycle Trailers group on Facebook. I'm getting some, uh, some traffic on, uh, on my video from that and some comments, and I appreciate uh, all the helpful comments. So come along and take a look at what I did. I will link in the description the video of the original build so you can see uh, check that one out as well this was just to go over some of the details and some of the questions that were asked about uh, about the build how we connected this did that and different things but if you have any other questions drop it in the messages below this project is kind of a special project for me because it was the last project that my dad and i did together i had already bought this lot and the lake is a few blocks down the road and we had the canoe we thought we got to make a bike trailer for the canoe to get it down to the lake so we can go fishing and, and do all of that we didn't have any of the boat or the kayak at this point it was just the canoe so if you've seen the other video you've seen kind of an overview of what we did but i'm going to go through some of the other uh, some of the other things this is what i started with just your regular old bicycle trailer now when I put it up on the canoe, you can see that the canoe hit the wheels. So I was going to have to put something up really high. The frame comes over and it dips down like that. And the hubs for the wheels are right here. So what I did is I took, you can see right here where the, where the frame comes down is right here. So I rotated this and I unhooked these hubs from here, flipped them down to get me the most height, and now that brought the wheels wider, and it also pushed, the, pushed them down so the frame was up higher. So that really was able to clear the canoe as it came down. And so if you want to do utilize one of these, I didn't have to buy any nuts, bolts, parts, pieces other than the bolts that went through here to hold on this wood trim. So speaking of that wood trim, what we did is we knew we wanted some foam on there. So we put the foam down and this is two layers of quarter inch plywood, the real flexible kind. And so we put this down on the trailer. I mean on the, uh, we put the foam down on the canoe. Then we put the wood down over it we loaded it up with we loaded i got some of that i'll show you we loaded it up with some of the wood glue and put the next layer on and then used ratchet straps around the canoe so it formed it perfectly around the canoe with the foam already on it did that in the front and back i measured it obviously with the frame set it all on there so that works well the zip ties are the same zip ties that i put on uh three or four years ago and they're still holding up and working fine. I'll just replace them whenever uh, as needed. Load it up, it's pretty easy. You pick up one end, drop it right on there, and that's how this rolls. And it does very good, it rolls very smooth. The front of the trailer, my dad got this plastic and he bent it into his C channel. That hooks to the front of the canoe here. And then he, uh, mounted a ratchet strap to the front of this plastic which we will take hold on uh, we'll take this strap go through the front loop of the canoe and hook this through that strap and then just ratchet ratchet that down and that sucks these two together and it makes the uh that connection between the canoe and this bracket nice and tight then, for this side, we just cut a notch out of the conduit, put a post through it. This is just a, another piece of plastic. I don't know where that came from. We had a hole. Now this is from the original trailer, and so we just utilized this to hook onto the back of the bike. And I'll show you the back of the bike. Yes, Tyler. Yes, sir. You want me to eat your popsicle? All right, here is the seat post. 
And what we've done here is taken a, uh, uh, a caster, you know, the four screws bolted onto the bottom of something and the wheel can spin. So we drilled out that, the axle for that wheel, pulled that wheel out. So now it'll rotate all the way around. We've got this action and then we hook up. This is the back arm that goes on the, onto the canoe. And so pin it. If I can get it right through here and lock it there. Now we've got up and down. If it'll even swivel, and then we can rotate left and right. Bye. So we have full action right here. I don't know if that was over engineered or over complicated. I've seen a couple of easy solutions, but that is the way that we do it. That's the way I've done it. Oh. Hi, Tyler. Sorry. 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 What do I press? <laughs> Alright, for loading it, I kind of point the center to the back. That way when I pick it up, it's lined up. I'm going to try to get it pretty close to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Alright, I'm out. These uh, bicycle trailer wheels and everything, they hold they hold a little bit more than they say they'll hold. They hold very well. And they pull very easily. The biggest thing is stopping. Getting going is easy because you have gears on a mountain bike, but stopping, there's a lot of weight to stop. So you wanna make sure you have some good brakes for stopping. The turning radius is really good because you can, you can go even more than perpendicular to the canoe and turn so you can turn very sharp on it give me a ride you ready for a ride all right we're getting out of here let me see if i can hold it okay all right so the lip on the canoe is right here and you can see this bites right into it hey, can I see? see if i can set her down hold on hold on as i'll go through here and then i'll loop in And then someone asked me about this ratchet, just a regular ratchet strap that we took the backside off and uh, and screwed it in. It's not. It's a uh, retracting ratchet strap, so you can bring it out. Then it holds up here. Hey hey hey! Hey hey hey! So it's sucked down, and now you got a solid connection. You got it. All right, stay right there. Let me hook the bike up. How far can I go? Boom, there it is. This is really hard to do when someone's pulling on it. Here is my universal joint, I guess. See a lot of this, uh, the bolts and things were left over from the original trailer. Goes back, connects here. You see how it's got a little bit of a little wobble to it. I think, and it wants to push the bike over because it's hooked up so high. I like the... Uh, the seat post connection, but I think if you go down to here and see that little loop That's where the Original bicycle trailer hooks up. That's where I hook up that little bicycle trailer. I Think something like that. I know it'd be hard to make right-hand turns, but Something like that I think would be a lot more stable whereas the bike right now wants to fall over or I think um, Something I also thought about would be taking some forks across the bottom and coming up back and then taking some conduit coming over like a fender and connecting here and making a uh, like a receiver hitch kind of thing, a ball or something to hook that to and maybe hooking it to the trailer. The nice thing, so that's things I would think about changing is maybe hooking up lower because it's, it wants to tip a lot. The nice thing about this design is I can take I can take this tongue off and I can hang it up in my shop. I can take the base and the wheels and I can hang it up in the shop. As to, it's not a real long piece. It's, uh, it tucks away in the shop very nicely. So that's one thing that I do like about this design. And just as a bonus for the video, another thing that I 
uh, a lot of people do with their canoes and kayaks and things like that is add on a little easy go button. So what I've done is I've taken some scrap wood and I screwed them together. Uh, I kind of notched it out here for the uh, for these rails, but I screwed that in and then put in a block over on the end and screwed it. Ants crawling on me. Screwed it in. And what I did to this uh, trolling motor is I put a PWM in it, uh, pulse width width pulse width modulator. So now. I have my forward and reverse are up here, and then this knob, you can hear it click. It goes from zero to 100%, so it pulses the electricity, so it's a lot more efficient, your battery lasts longer, and the main thing is, is I can go trolling with it, and the blade can spin very, very slow. So it's nice when um, hitting the bank, doing some flipping, doing something like that, and I'm going slow, because originally, it would push me at a good two miles an hour and now I can control that a lot better. Go a little slower, go a little faster, it's a lot better. You can use a smaller battery, it doesn't take up as much space and as much weight in the canoe. It's uh, beneficial. So if you've got a trolling motor and it put a pulse width modulator on it, it works awesome. Especially these old ones. But I think that's all we got for this one. I want to say thanks to the uh, that Facebook page, Bicycles Bicycles Trailer Group. I uh, appreciate uh, the views. And if you've got any questions, hit me up down below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.